Bless her love to boom shots every time, man called Rob. You know, protege representing live from the offices of Complex Magazine, you know, NYC. Who knows? I just go where the trade wind blow. Watch out, boom shots. You tell him to tell us a big blue wind and murmur now. So this one is a short shot. If you can't boom shots. Boom shots. We saw you in this crazy storm-directed video. Um, it looked like a major motion picture boiled down into a few minutes. Okay. Um, tell me just how that came together, because it's like, you know, this is storm, better must come, salter, and you know, like, how, how did that collab come together? Well, Storm has been a fan of my music for a while, and I've been a fan of his work. So we always spoke about doing something together. It was never quite the right time and I didn't feel like we had the right project until this song. Winter suggested him also, so I was on the same page and you know, he, he didn't really want to do videos anymore. Mm -hmm. Because you know, he was concentrating on movies and he heard the song and he was like, yo, he thinks it's gonna be something nice. So mm -hmm. his whole thing was that, you know, he wants to do it and it has to be of a certain standard, which is what we wanted it to be, an international standard. So we right. really tried our best to um, get it to that standard, and it was so much fun doing it, you know? Yeah, and with the uh, the treatment, I mean, did did you write it all out, or was it a, huh, the, a the, reasoning? Or what? Yeah, the treatment was first, it was Winter's idea. Winter is a great producer to work with, because he has song ideas, he has video ideas, Okay. <laughs> really talented so the whole concept was initially his then when I heard Winter's concept I added some and then when Storm heard the whole thing he added some mm -hmm. you now we had everything Storm added the whole boat and sea and, and thing and we, which is the which is the so I have to give him props for that but yeah. the whole point of it was that we wanted it to represent the song in a way that you know you start off with everything and then as the day goes by, you lose stuff, and it's either you're gonna turn around, go home, or you're gonna keep keep pushing forward, you know, mm. figuratively, and mm. that's what it's about. Wow, is that uh, a parable for things that you experience or that you just learned in life? Yeah, man, it's always it's like you have to just get up. My dad always tells me bounce back, and um, and um, even further than that, it's about, as I said really understanding what what is important you know what i mean and import what's important is your perspective and your attitude mm -hmm. so even with all the stuff going on that video we wanted you know to keep the smiles on our faces keep having fun keep being positive and yeah. it's inspiring to watch i mean honestly because we've all had those moments of the broken down car like you feel that stress when yeah. you're watching it and you know yeah. and then as one door closes, another is open. Yeah, man, yeah, man. So that's the whole vibe of the thing. Definitely. Um, so it's, you must be seeing a big response. I mean, it's a great song. The video is great. You got a lot of looks on the video premiere and everything like yeah, that. Sure. Are you are you feeling a shift? Are you feeling new eyes opening and things like that? Yeah, man, what I mean, I'm with you in complex um, <laughs> building right now, you know what I mean? and. Um, we have lots of stuff going on, and it, it's a new market, you know, this, this it's strong in Europe and all of that, but even within that, this song is one of the biggest songs in reggae music this year so far, and we want to make it that, I always want to make songs with impact, so when you think back 10 years from now, 2014, I want Who Knows to be a song that is remembered, so... It's like I do see the response and I see a lot of people who have previously not been into reggae music gravitating towards it and that's the main thing that we want to change the perception of what people think reggae music is because I can see what people think the genre is to what it is now and represent it's far. So we're trying to, to, to bring the reality of what the music is to the people now. I think you're reading my thoughts because my next <laughs> question was I was going to ask you about a tweet that I'm sort of half remembering but it was something that you wrote to the effect of like what does reggae even mean anymore in this day and age you know like yeah. people, you know of all the music coming out of Jamaica yeah. and I just you know I, 
when I saw that tweet, I said, "Me and him have to reason about this topic." Yeah, man. It, it's it's um it's the, the perception of it is 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 one one thing, and we as youths coming up now are doing music. We're from Jamaica, but you know how Bob Marley and them used to. I just was talking about this idea. Bob Marley and them used to, you know, listen to country music and blues and form their sound, but we don't listen to like that as much, you know mm. I mean? I not listen to that, but I mean, like, my main focus is from hip-hop, mm -hmm. from rock and roll. And so when it, when, it, when it merges into my music now, I'm from Jamaica, reggae is a big influence on me, but my sound that when I mix it and push it out now, it's not gonna be sounding like what Bob Marley's um, sound sounds like, mm -hmm. or these sounds, so it's like, we're trying to change that I just asked that question as to be like, what do you think this music stands for? Because even within, like, Chronix and I make two different sounds. Like, it, it sonically our music sounds different. Mm -hmm. and, um, but we're still under the same heading of reggae music. So it's like, I want to challenge as to what do we see that as? What do people see that as? And um, I just really feel like the sound that I'm pushing right now <laughs> yeah, is is you know it's a real hybrid of all sounds, and I want it doesn't have to be pigeonholed to reggae. It's just music. I'm Jamaican, mm -hmm. and I make music. You know, no doubt. Gunja Laws was yeah. my main inspiration for like, this album. Okay, in terms of sonically, of what I wanted to experiment from the root of, and then now to put on a lot of different um, influences on it. You know what I mean? So like, like. The sound is a hybrid, man, you know, and it's, it's, it has all influence, it has some rock on there, like, not rock, but in, you know, it's things of it, you know, there, there's enough influences from hip-hop with my patterning and flows over these beats, so, mm -hmm. yeah, man. It's all in the mix, it's all in the Dutch pot there. Yeah, man, you know, like, you, you came to my, I always remember, you came to my first main show, you saw me, and you got it. You're like, all right, I see the Jimi Hendrix stuff, I see the Beatles stuff, I see the Rage Against the Machine stuff. Yeah. And it's like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I always said, I always wanted to be Zach on stage. Mm. I used to see him on stage and be like, that's how I want to be, just free and just crazy. And, and to be doing it now is a joy. Actually, the, the main thing that impressed me on that first show that I saw, which I vividly remember, it was a Sumfest, and... It was not any individual influence, but your freedom and your personality coming yeah. through. Because very often, a reggae show, uh, you feel like the artist is in character sometimes. Yo, do you yes, know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you mean. And even on record, right. and that's why in this record, like I didn't want to be okay. I am this, and it's, it's like I wanted to show my imperfections. I wanted to speak about stuff that I feel that may not necessarily be good feelings but I feel it you know and and I'm um, feeling I'm uh, having a high ego feel it, like just to show my imperfections and not to be like this is a standard of what I'm supposed to represent and I am perfect and I never look left or right I'm straight I don't like that in music mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't like that in music I like when an artist says th th there's a line on my new album where I say um Brilliant ornaments crumble down to rust because we put our faith in lust and disregard the trust. And I say, hell, I know the rush. I've had the feeling take me over. The power in my hand having the band over my shoulder. Mm. The bands of money coming in will change the ones around you. But why is because they can't stop you getting older? But still, this is what I was say. But still, I admit that I get caught up in the game. Saw the legends do it naturally. I did the same, you know. So it's like I wanted to show that yo, I. I while out sometime, I lose my focus sometime and it's life and you, 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 you learn from your mistakes and I'm gonna make mistakes and you're gonna read about them. Are you gonna be, so I don't wanna be I'm perfect and I'll never do shit. And mm -hmm. On stage, that's the same way I wanna be like, if I can be 10 years old on stage, that's what I wanna do. I don't, I want to have that inner child to express itself. And It's a pivotal year, 2014, we're definitely gonna remember who knows? We're gonna remember dread and terrible. We're gonna remember cartel going away for life. We're gonna remember 
you know, Gaza Slim come with a gospel tune. You oh, know, you like, saw that. Yeah, <laughs> like people resetting everything, yeah. kind of rebooting it's in like, and I just, you know, very often your name is mentioned along with a few others as part of a kind of roots movement or revival back to the roots kind of thing. I just want to get your, you know, personal take on that. Do you feel that's accurate? Do you feel, you know, there is some kind of a tug of war and roots dance all, where is the future of Jamaican music? Because that's been the paradigm for a long time. You have the, the purists who say this dance all thing is messing up the culture, and then you have, you know, the dance hall saying let the youths explore new sounds and things like that. But how do you see yourself in that conversation? Um. I feel, let me answer, first of all, dancehall, I love dancehall music, I love Jamaican music. It's never been, for me, a tug and war between artists and that, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. without dancehall, I wouldn't be here. Clearly, you see, my influence is dancehall heavily, too. Yeah. In terms of what we are doing, though, there is a rise in consciousness that's obviously happening. There is a movement that's happening also. And what we are trying to do is just make our mark. We're not saying anything negative about dancehall. Chronix does dancehall more time. Mm. Makes very good dancehall music. Mm. Yep. And um, we're just trying to set up this gener. Like I always look at it as a, as a decade thing. 2010 to 2020 is our time to govern the music. You know what I mean? 